Hello everyone, welcome to Whiteboard Docker Sessions Part 3. In this session, we will elaborate more on Docker Images containers. And also we will discuss the image layers, repositories and the commands. Let's discuss how DevOps communities collaborated before containerization. Once the development is completed, the dev team is going to deploy, they are going to promote their code into the development environment. They do exercise of all their configuration softwares. Once the dev environment is passed, then they are ready to deploy for the quality assurance, QA. So from QA onwards, the dev team is handing over to the ops for QA and production deployments. When the QA is signed off, then they, are, they will promote the deployables or code to prod. Before that, so how the ops team is going to prepare the environment because this development is completely done by the dev team. So they are not aware of what software is required. The first is what software is required. Second is configurations required and followed by environment variables or any any third party libraries all these instructions need to come from the dev team to the ops team so the dev team is handing over all these details in the form of di deployment instruction guide when the ops team is receiving the DI, first they need to exercise the DI in the QA environment. According to their DI, they have to procure that software, either it is open source or commercial. Then after once they procure the software, they have to install according to specified in the DI. Then they have to do the configurations, environment variables, third party. So everything what is specified in the DI, they have to follow. Then after that, then they will start testing. Once this QA is done and QA is passed, they have to repeat the same steps in the production environment. So this is the story before containerization are uh, before a uh, DevOps, DevOps are uh, CI and CD. Let's discuss now how the culture between Dev and Ops changed after the introduction of containerization. After the introduction of containerization, the collaboration between Dev and Ops went very smooth. Previously, because of the DI, if anything is missed in the, in the DI while executing by the Ops team, the complete deployment is going to be failed, rollbacks, hiccups, back and forth between Dev and Ops team. Now the Containerization smoothened the relationship between Dev and Ops. What is the responsibility of the Dev team and Ops team in the containerization world? Let's discuss. Only we are discussing in, 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 in the context of Docker, Docker container technology. So what the development team is going to do? Development is, team is responsible for preparing a file called docker file so the docker file the name is like this docker file no extension docker file what the docker file is going to consist so the docker file is going to consist like this so the comment like this and instruction and arguments 
will elaborate more on this the docker file in the upcoming sessions so the developer is responsible for preparing the docker docker file from the docker file by using docker commands docker commands they build docker image once they build the docker image they are going to push this image into a registry so once the docker image is built so now we are going to discuss about registry it is not a docker hub we are going to discuss an enterprise level private registry an enterprise level each enterprise they are going to have their own docker registry so the docker registry is going to be pushed into the registry so that is the job of the dev team the dev team so ops team is going to pull that image then after pulling that they are going to run the image so now the question is previously when we discussed of di softwares configurations environment variables and third parties now how these are going to fit in this new culture we will elaborate so this is the story like how what is the docker file we will elaborate what the docker file which is prepared by the dev team again once the docker file is done they are going to use the docker commands to build the docker image they are going to publish that image into the registry into the private registry once the registry is done then ops team will start acting so they are going to pull that image and they start running the docker containers let's elaborate more on docker file the docker file if you want to do any comments in the docker file you have to use a symbol followed by comments the docker file consisting of the lines like this instruction followed by optional arguments if the instruction is required arguments you have to pass the space between if there is no arguments just the instruction as discussed in previous sessions in most of the cases new images are formed new images are prepared by using the existing images in most of the cases here this is the sample docker file if you see this one from is the instruction maintainer is instruction run is an instruction cmd is an instruction this is the instruction part the left hand side the right hand side is the arguments so we are starting this is the base image or the parent image we are after that maintainer is the author and we are executing this command and this is the uh, default command so this is the sample docker file so this is the sample so what we discussed base as parent image author of the image instructions to execute and the default command this is the sum of the instruction list if you see there is instruction if you want to do add you will use the add instruction so what is the add and copy these are two similar instructions but there is a slight difference between copy and add both is to copy but add if we using compressed files or if you want to use the remote location to copy then in these cases you have to use the add this is for the local stuff so you can't use for compressed files or the remote locations so that is the reason otherwise both acts as the same add and copy so for the environment variables you have to use this instruction env 
expose whenever the container is started if you want to access an app so you have to expose a port so this is what we are going to use this command to expose a port of a container from we discussed previously so when you are starting from a base image or called parent image you have to use the from maintainer image creator details this is duplicated because this is going to be used with the labels what is the label so in the case of um, the maintainer the label key is going to be maintainer and followed by the value we will we'll use so the maintainer is is duplicated you have to use the labels for the maintainer run this is central executing directive and again you want to specify the uid user to run the container so whenever you are starting a container in a system so we are you are not supposed to use the root to run this container you have to specify the right user who is having the privileges so you have to specify that user the volumes we will discuss on this one enable to a directory on the host you want to specify working directory sets the path where the command should be executed so all these commands when we are specifying so those commands to be executed from this working directory and labels when you are preparing a docker image the main part is you need to keep the docker image size as less as possible for this reason you have to exclude the files that are not necessary to how to exclude the files that are not necessary so we have to specify one more file called dot docker ignore in this docker ignore so you have to specify like this comments is ignored if you want to exclude the files and directories starting with the temp in any immediate subdirectories of the root so you have to specify star slash temp star if you want to exclude the files and directories starting with the temp from any subdirectory that is two levels below the root you have to specify two levels below so this is one level below star this is the two levels below like this star one level again star one level then again temp star temp question mark exclude the files and directories in the root directory whose names are one character extension of temp so the question means see this is the star means any number of characters the question mark means only one character means in this case if it is temp1 temp2 they are going to be matching in this case but if we use temp22 is not going to be matched temp star is going to be matched here so that is the reason so so at the end so uh, this is comments are ignored anything which is starting with the temp temp followed by star means temp like temp 1 temp 2 temp 9 any 9 and le one level down subdirectory then two levels temp star okay starting with the temp root directory and two levels down and again one character if you want to specify temp question mark so these are the so this is the sample docker ignore file once you specify this one your your folder need to look like this so the docker file all these are your build files and docker ignore file let's start writing a sample docker file with what we discussed so the first instruction is going to be from Ubuntu then for time being we will use maintainer 
Later we'll use labels. And you run command apt update in the case of Ubuntu. If you want to use apt update in earlier versions, you have to use apt get cmd echo hello from docker alt so this is the sample docker file if you see this is the from this is the base or parent image author and this is the instruction we are instruction directive we are executing we are requesting docker to execute this instruction and uh, this is the default command once this is done you have to save this one the important part is you have to you are not supposed to use any extension you have to use a docker so you have to go for a docker file the the file name is a d starts with caps followed by the small case letters docker file docker file so once that is done so you have to open the the folder you can see here the docker file then we are going to execute docker belt and the dot or you can specify the file name and the, the tag name the image tag name my first image and dot so docker belt iphone t my first image space dot if you enter it start building the image i will pause this video until the download com completes download is completed if we check this one this is the image first is prepared then we can see the history of the image docker history my first image now you'll see here these are the uh, different uh, layers is created so this is the first layer and this is the second layer this is the third layer this is the fourth fifth layer so all these five layers are coming from the base image if you see the base image of the ubuntu these are going to match the base image so this is going to match this base image layers these five layers if you see here as well these five layers is coming from base image then on top of this layer this is where we started maintainer then after that run then cmd so this is these three are the layers we created on top of the base image this base image is pulled from docker hub then followed by the instructions we written here so 24 seconds ago these are five weeks ago so far we elaborated on docker file the syntax and the comments and some of the instructions and the docker ignore and also we created a docker image by using docker file so what is a docker image if we see in this diagram docker image consisting of different layers you see different layers these layers are read only layers so docker image is an immutable what is the meaning of immutable is is unchangeable you can't change this docker image once it is created is an immutable file what it is consisting of it is consisting of source code libraries and dependencies and other softwares required by the source code 
and also this docker file docker image is also referred as snapshot what is a snapshot point in time point in time image so it is consisting of an application and a virtual environment at a specific point in time let's see uh, this is the docker image we used in this one this is the base image and from there this is the second instruction this is the third this is the fourth one so whenever we are executing this becomes layer 0 is layer 1 again we are not discussing the layers of base image so layer 2 and layer 3 means if it is 1 means is 2 3 and 4 so these layers is referred to a read only layers read only layers and note that each docker instruction generates say a new layer and one of the main point to note in the docker file we use it to do many commands in this commands run is one of the command to execute the instructions copy and add we are already discussed for compressed and remote location copies we have to use add instead of the copy in all other cases both are the same so these are going to create the layers modify the layers okay and all other commands they create intermediate layers they do not influence the size of the image so these layers they they influence the size of the image each one each one is creates a layer either it is is intermediate layer or like permanent layer but some of the commands they influence the size of the image and some of them are not so those these are only commands they influence the size of the image but these commands they are not going to influence the size of the image and uh, docker build commands as we discussed so docker build options if you want to do the tag iphone t if you want to set the labels for the image you have to use iphone iphone label whenever we use docker build and when we specify dot is the current directory so in this case you have to follow the name like this if you are using other than this name you have to use iphone f or file and followed by the name of the file and the caches we are going to discuss the the cache part if you are not going to use the caches you have to use iphone iphone no cache let's do some whiteboard discussion on layer cache we have a docker file docker file from instruction by using python base image followed by copy we are copying a text file requirements dot txt into the working directory then after that we are running the pip command followed by some arguments and cmd command so this is our sample docker file whenever we are running this docker file regarding to this base this is the instruction from this is the base image regarding to this is one layer is going to be formed so in total one two three and four so the first layer is going to prepare and this layer is going to be cache it cache it then followed by the first time we are we are running this this command so we are running this command by using docker 
build iPhone T, the tag name we are doing first image, the tag. For regarding to the second instruction, one more layer is going to be prepared. This is two of four, this is one of four. Then regarding to run pip command, then third instruction, the layer three of four, then four of four. Four layers are prepared. Okay, then this image is going to be exported. By using the same Docker file, if you are running Docker build iPhone T second image. When we are running the same, when we are using the same Docker file without any modifications, but we are going to prepare another image. So what happens in this case? In this case, instead of preparing the first layer, it is going to take one of four from cache, then second one, two of four from cache, then three of four from cache, and fourth layer is also four of four from cache. So in this case, it is not going to prepare any layers the docker is going to take these layers from the cache. Let's discuss the scenario 2. We do have a docker file version v1, version v1. In this docker file, the image is python image, some tag 3.8 and uh, then followed by copy command in this copy we are doing requirements dot txt file and followed by we are doing the run if command and arguments and cmd command so this is our first docker file whenever we do have a requirement to copy another text file so requirements 2 dot txt so in this case, so we if we prepare, what is the best way to prepare the Docker file? If we do this way from Python, some base image and copy of first one requirements dot txt and if we do copy requirements two dot txt followed by a run a pip command and cmd cmd command if you write in this fashion means if you are adding the another copy next to that copy what will happen and if you write in this way from python 3.8 copy requirements.txt instead of adding next another copy here we are keeping the run as it is as the version 1 pip command now we are going to add the copy here copy uh, requirements 2 requirements 2.txt followed by cmd command so what is the best efficient way to write either in this fashion in the v1 or in the v3 fashion let's discuss in this fashion so when we are running the first time the v1 so those layers are going to be created one of four two of four three of four and four of four so all these are going to be cached cache it cache it so when we are running in this way so again here one two three four five layers going to be formed so in this case the first layer one of four is is going to be taken from cache and second one is the same both are the same is going to be taken from cache two of four then 
uh, regarding to the three, both are the, not the same. So these are not going to be taken from cash. It is going to be prepared and is going to be cashed. So once it is not taken from cash, the subsequent layers are not going to taken from cash. Means only it is utilized two layers, two layers from the cash, one and two. If it comes to here, then one of four is taken from cash, then two of four from taken from cash, three of four taken from cash, then four of four is not taken from cash, then the rest is not going to be taken from cash. Means it is utilizing three layers took from cash. It means it is going to prepare the image in the faster way in stuff in the V2. Means it is best utilizing the cash. As we discussed in our whiteboard sessions, how the cache works. Let's check this practical example. So this is the sample a Docker file. In this Docker file, we are using Python base image. And this is the tag 3.8.7 Slimbuster. You can check any tag by going to hub.docker.com. You can use any Python base image. Then after that, we are doing a copy command. Then this is the one second instruction. This is the instruction one. This is the instruction two. Then this is the third instruction. Run pip command and enter. It. When we are running this belt by using a Docker belt iPhone T tag name followed by dot. When we are running this bell, it almost took 281 seconds. It is preparing first layer, one of three. So these are in total three layers. So this is the entry point. So one of three, Docker, first tip. So that in order to prepare the first layer, it took most of the time, followed by the second layer, followed by the third layer, and exporting the image. So when we are like so almost it is prepared the first layer one of three and uh, second layer two of three and uh, third layer three of three. Then when we are doing that uh, using the same Docker file when we are preparing a second image it almost took 4.8 seconds because if we see the one of three it took from cache. 2 of 3 is cache and 3 of 3 is cache. Because of it is took like this is when it is preparing second image this took from cache 1 of 3 and 2 of 3 is also from cache and 3 of 3. So the build is very fast. What is the strategy how this caching works? If we see this, the cache strategy mechanism here, this is the Docker file one. In this Docker file, this is the first instruction, second instruction, and third and fourth four instructions. When we are preparing a new Docker file, then we have the instruction one. Instruction two is not same as the Docker file one. Instruction 2 is modified, instruction 3, instruction 4. So when we are preparing an image by using the Docker file, then these layers is going to be cached. Layer 1, layer 2, layer 3 and layer 4. So this is 1 of 4, 2 of 4, 3 of 4 and 4 of 4. When we are preparing an image by using Docker file v2, it checks the instruction 1 is same as instruction 1 of Docker file 1. Answer is S. When answer is S, then is taken from use cache is also S. Then instruction 2 is mod like instruction 2 of file 1 is not same as instruction 2 of file 2. So both are not same, use cache, answer is no. Then cache is not used. Once the cache is not used, then all the remaining layers the cache uses, uses is we can say no. 
means if we design the docker file v2 in this fashion only one layer is used from cache the remaining all layers is not used from cache obviously the build time takes more seconds if we design in this fashion init1 init2 is same as docker file v1 init3 and here init4 modified if we design the docker file in this fashion a new docker file v3 in this case v1 in instruction 1 is same as instruction 1 of v3 instruction 2 is same as instruction 2 of v3 instruction 3 is same as instruction 3 of v3 but instruction 4 is modified in these cases layer 1 is took from cache layer 2 is also took from cache layer 3 only it prepares the layer 4 obviously build takes lesser time compared to previous case layer cache rules docker layer cache rules if the text of the command has not changed the version from the cache will be used again for the copy it also checks the files has not changed so this is if it is not a copy only the text is enough to check if the text is not changed both are same then cache is used for the copy the important is when you doing the copy for example file one dot txt and a dot it also need to check is not only the text of this one is also need to check the contents of the file is also changed or not so these are the some of the commands we took from docker.com so the base command is docker then followed by docker image belt so this is we already did uh, discussed to prepare a build file so to prepare image from a docker file we are going to use this one and to check the history of an image docker image history and uh, to to import the contents of a tarball to create the file system image we will use this one to inspect the image to load the image from tar to list the images ls and uh, to prune to remove unnecessary unused images and this is from pull the image from registry and this is to push into the registry to remove one or more images this is save save one or more images to a tar archive so this is same as once you saved in the tar again you can use the load to load the image so these are relates wherever you are using load and you can save and uh, you can install whenever you want to tag a image you can use the tag let's do some practical examples of these commands we already discussed the build command to prepare the image from docker build so the command we used a docker build so uh, we need to use the image so docker is the base command docker image build if, if it is uh, if it is a different file you have to specify if an f or if it is the docker file convention in the same current location you're going to use the dot symbol this is already be discussed now let's check for the docker images how many images are are there if you can say docker image ls now you can see all the docker images and to check the history of a particular image now we're going to go for i want to check the 
history of my python second image now docker image history my python second image now it is going to display all the layers and uh, you can see the size so that this is the history of the image if you want to inspect an image docker inspect so docker so docker image is the common prefix for all the image commands docker image inspect my python second image and you type this one so this is going to be a a json file we will discuss all these later currently only we are interested in the layers you can see these are the layers and ids of the those layers there is the inspect command and uh, pull we already discussed the pull command in order to pull a image from the docker hub we are going to use the docker a pull so you have to specify the image name if we if you want to pull nginx and uh, if you don't specify the tag it uses the default tag as the latest it is going to pull the image from the docker hub the, the important stuff is if you are not configured any internal private registry it automatically connects to the docker hub to pull the images and how to push the images to push the images first you have to register in the docker hub go to docker hub and sign up and get the credentials once you are get the credentials you have to do the login it's going to prompt the username and passwords i already entered so the login is succeed once is the login is succeed so you have to push the image so in order to push the image if i do like this docker push my if i python second image if i do this way obviously it's going to fail if i do like this pushing this image waiting prepare see now it is saying denied request access to the resource is denied because whenever if you want to push the image you can't push the image in this fashion so you have to push the image first you have to tag the image docker image tag my python second image to so what is this one is you have to prefix that one with you, you with your username now it is tagged now it is tagged when we say docker image ls now you will see here the image is tagged in this fashion because this is the docker hub user id so you have to prefix this one now you can push the docker push of this image now you can say ka123 my python second image now it is going to be pushed into the docker hub and you can check the docker hub as well once the process is finished it is taking some time i'm going to pause this video until it finish still it is uploading i'm going to pause until the upload finishes uploading is almost finished it is is pushing it is pushed now we can check the docker hub now if i check that docker hub if i refresh my page 
now I can see my Python second image is posted here. If I click this image, so these are the, the details of the image. So that is the push command. Let's go and discuss another command. So, so far we discussed build, the tree, inspect, ls to list the images, pull to pull from the registries, push push into the registry, and tag also how to tag the images also we discussed. Then how to save the images. So what is the meaning of saving? So in order to use the registries, if somebody want to get that image so you have to pull another one we need to push so you have to push then the one who need the image you need to pull instead of using the trace tray you can you can convert into the tar file for example docker image we're gonna do my my python second image dot tar then you are going to do this in the same directory my python second image so you have to use iphone o Docker image now we have to use save so if we see docker image save iPhone O is the option output so this is the tar file name and this is the image we are going to save no such image so we spelled it wrong my python if we check the image list docker image ls so this is the image we want to make it tar file so docker image save from o the tar file name my tar dot tar then you want to do that and you type now it is going to be saving that image into the tar file in the same directory let's wait to finish the save now it is saved now you can check the directory so this is the tar file which is saved now this one you can give it to anyone they can load so once it is saved now you're gonna load docker image load previously we used iphone o then you, you need to use iphone i my tar dot tar so it is going to be loading so this is the case in a to avoiding the registry so in the in enterprise nobody is going to use this fashion they always use the registries once the image is prepared they push then who want the image they need to pull it but this is the another option you see loaded the image in this fashion so so far this is the the some of the docker image commands if you want more visit uh, the docker hub docker.com you can see more commands.